NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070. How good is this graphics card? Guys, as you can see, I'm gonna review an ASUS ROX Strix card uh, the, in the overclock edition, the RTX 4070. And what I want to know, how does this graphics card perform in games that are using a lot of ray tracing? Because the ray tracing is what you usually buy these NVIDIA cards for. And how does it perform in different computer systems with different types of CPUs? Because some CPUs, they don't have that much calculating power and others, they have a lot of power or are optimized for gaming with X3D cache. And for this, I have prepared three different systems, two AM4 systems, because a lot of people still use the AM4 uh, with an entry level CPU, with a specific gaming CPU with the X3D cache and a really high-end, super expensive CPU that costs like $600, give or take, uh, when that came out. So three test systems where I went ahead and run all the benchmarks and all the graphics uh, settings. And uh, right now you're seeing a test run with the WQHD resolution in Cyberpunk and Ray Tracing Ultra. That is pretty high and looks pretty amazing. I really love the ray tracing that makes the game so much more vivid. And we have the budget CPU in there. And as you can see, the graphics card renders a fair amount of frames. <clears throat> and you see the CPU utilization hovers around, let's say 70, 75, maybe even 80%. So that's a pretty good uh, utilization um, from which you can already see. If you would lower the graphics settings, the graphics card would render more frames and then there is not a lot of headroom anymore with this 5600X CPU. So that CPU works, but quickly looking at the first set of benchmarks, I can illustrate this point to you. Because here, the graphics settings, the lower the settings are, the more you move the CPU, uh, the bottleneck towards the CPU. As you can see here, the graphics card uh, generates a lot more frames if you have a CPU with an X3D cache. And uh, the, with the 5600X, you're leaving a lot of FPS on the table when you have very low graphics settings. So that's a consideration. And we're also gonna do a price comparison about these three systems, how much did they cost and how much more FPS did you get for that? But jumping to the WQHD resolution, because that's a little bit more my logic. You get and get, you buying an RTX 4070, not to play in low res, 1080p. No, you get, it's a more expensive card. You probably want to play at higher resolutions. And here you see a very, interesting tr development because as soon as you bump up the settings, the bottleneck moves away from the CPU and shifts more towards the graphics cards. And uh, yeah, some people have criticized me for doing gaming PC builds with the AMD 5600X. But as you can see, if you have high settings, like for example, the Ray Tracing Ultra that I showed you the benchmark a second ago, there is not much uh, of a difference, maybe eight FPS or something like that. That is, you see uh, that, uh, yeah, you can get a little bit more FPS with an AMD 5800X3D, but it's not a lot. So that brings us to the point, how much does these systems cost? And uh, you see test system one with the 5600X, about $260 give or take, and that di did deliver, I mean, we're talking only about the board at the CPU that delivered uh, 75 fps versus you have the x3d cache cpu that delivered 83 fps now like i told you if you have special scenarios where you want to play competitive with high frame rates lower graphic settings and competitive high frame rate gaming i would always use the x3d cache cpus but if you're just a casual gamer the 5600x works very well and quite a bummer was the AM5 system with a very expensive motherboard and a very expensive CPU that's easily a thousand dollars and it's not really that much faster. But then again, you really wouldn't need to build a thousand dollar mainboard CPU combo on an AM5 system. You can easily do that for four hundred dollars as well. And uh, I think that's what I'm something I'm going to test in the future as well. But I want to make uh, it very clear if you're buying a modern graphics card uh, from nvidia or from amd 
please look maybe that you have a PCIe 4 system. I think that's better, especially if you step it down, let's say from 4070 to RTX 4060, then RTX 4060 only has eight lanes uh, and you do not want to pair, for example, an eight lane PCIe 4.0 card into PCIe 3.0. And if you have a PCIe 4 GPU, then I would also pair that with a PCIe 4 system, ideally. That would be also a consideration. Now, in conclusion, what do I think about the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4070? Guys, I think it's an excellent card. I really like this card. Yes, it has a little bit of a premium price. I think I paid a give or take $100 more compared to other RTX 4070s. But in the case of the ASUS card, for me, it's totally worth it because you have really nice RGB effects. You have a massive cooler and normally ASUS also does a great job on the PCB as well as on the power design, you know, the MOSFETs and everything that's usually a little bit oversized with these premium cards. So all in all, a really nice package. And uh, yeah, you do not have to use the Strix cards. So you can always uh, save a little bit of money and just take the normal ones, but just know that there are small differences. Um, if you're the casual gamer and you don't play that much, you could easily get a 4060. I was very happy with the 4060 as well. And if you want to do 4K gaming or you are really demanding, then probably the RTX 4080 would be more suitable and we're going to do some comparison benchmarks there as well amd against nvidia rtx 4060 70 or 80 against each other but today i wanted to specifically look at when do the cpu bottlenecks show up because some people brought that up in the comments uh, how to pair that correctly which i have illustrated to you guys if you have any questions about graphics cards or hard computer hardware leave them in a comments below. I will have a look at that and I'll see you as a subscriber in the next video.